Hello, my name is Trent Roberts, Soil Fertility Specialist with the University of Arkansas System Division of Agriculture. Today I'm going to be talking about the importance of soybean fertilization. As with any crop rotation or crop production system, soil testing is a solid foundation of that crop production system and helps to ensure that we not only profit or maximize profitability, but also maximize yield. One key thing that's very important for soybean production in Arkansas is K, potassium or potash management. You can see here beside me that in one section we have highly deficient uh, soybeans that are exhibiting those classical symptoms of K or potash deficiency next to some well fertilized soybeans here on my right. One thing that we found is that K fertilization or potash fertilization is very tightly uh, related to the economics or the profitability of soybean production in Arkansas. Uh, as we talk about this more, one thing I'm going to keep uh, reiterating is this idea that uh, how we manage our K fertilizer is going to have a big impact on how profitable our soybean production systems are. We've been collaborating with scientists in ag economics as well as, uh, that would be Michael Pop as well as Nathan Slayton, uh, to look at exactly how our soil test recommendations, our K fertilizer rates, and our yield potentials impact the economics of K fertilization in soybean. Uh, one thing that we found is that as the value of our soybeans change, uh, the profit maximizing K rate changes uh, as well. And that's something that we want to take into consideration in years to come is starting out with a sound quality soil testing program to kind of gauge and determine what our soil test K availability is. Couple that with this newly developed calculator to determine what our profit maximizing K rate will be for our soybean production systems. One thing that you'll find is obviously when soybean or commodity prices are low or depressed, that yield maximizing K rate or profit maximizing K rate is going to be somewhat lower than if the value of the soybean is, is much higher. So that's something that we definitely want to take into consideration. Another thing along those same lines is earlier this year we released a video specifically talking about our potassium monitoring program for soybean and I would encourage you to go check out that video. But what we're hoping is to increase the utilization of tissue testing in season to help identify hidden hunger in soybean and tell us when and where we might benefit from additional potash applications in soybean. One unique thing about this particular uh, tissue testing program that we have, it's the first dynamic critical concentration for soybean potassium. And the idea behind that is that as our crop grows and matures, we increase biomass and we typically decrease our tissue K concentrations. It's really a dilution effect, right? As we put on more biomass, we dilute the amount of K that's actually going to be in the tissue. And so what that means is, we now have this dynamic relationship where we understand that that tissue K is going to drop over time as the crop matures and progresses. And so it gives us a target where we can say, okay, anytime after the R1 growth stage, we have a target that we want to stay above. And as long as we maintain our tissue K concentration above that target, we can reasonably expect that our yield is going to be maximized as it relates to K or potash fertilization. One key thing about this particular tissue monitoring program is it really hinges around the R1 growth stage. And so it's very important that we accurately identify the timing of when that crop hits the R1 growth stage because what we're going to use is the days after R1 and the tissue K concentration to determine whether or not we have optimal K levels, suboptimal, or extremely deficient. One good thing about this particular nutrient monitoring program is the idea that it can help us diagnose hidden hunger. And so hidden hunger is gonna be one of those situations where we may be losing yield to a particular deficiency such as potash, but we don't see these very extreme visual symptoms of firing around the leaves uh, associated with the chlorotic nature of K deficiency in our row crops. The last thing that I wanna reiterate is the use of cover crops in production systems. We've been doing a lot of work on cover crops and if there's one rotation where cover crops are probably the easiest to incorporate, it's immediately prior to soybean. 
So all the work that we've done over the past 10 years has really indicated that the easiest crop to implement cover crops in is going to be soybean. And so if you're interested in looking at cover crops or dealing with cover crops, we would really encourage you to start thinking about that prior to a soybean crop. And part of the reason that we encourage that is, you know, when you start utilizing cover crops, there's gonna be some bumps, there's gonna be some hiccups. And at least in my opinion, soybean are the most forgiving in regards to those bumps and hiccups that you might encounter with cover crops. As always, we appreciate the support of the Arkansas Soybean uh, Promotion Board and the Arkansas Soybean Farmers. And if you have any questions, we'd be happy to try to answer them.